Hello again. From time to time, one comes across something so bizarre in the news that it's really difficult to tell whether or not it's a spoof, something like April Fool's Day. As many viewers will know, Parkhurst and Albany prisons on the Isle of Wight house dangerous men, many of them rapists and paedophiles. There is anxiety, though, among staff and visitors about whether any of these male criminals might be being misgendered. That is to say, perhaps a violent rapist is secretly a woman inside and wishes to be acknowledged as such. I suppose that this can be a problem when you're dealing with people like the Yorkshire Ripper, who was held for some time on the Isle of Wight. After all, just because somebody is a lorry driver with a beard and goes around hacking up prostitutes with a screwdriver in his spare time, that's no reason to jump to any hasty conclusions about what gender he really identifies as. I give a link in the description to this video to the Twitter account of the prisons on the Isle of Wight. And we can see that they've got to grips with this tricky conundrum. As part of National Inclusion Week, of which, by the way, I have never heard in the whole course of my life, they are handing out badges so that prisoners can correct any misapprehensions about their essential identity. Don't assume that all these child molesters with penises are really men. You don't know what they're feeling inside. The badges include he, them, her, they, she, her, and he, him. There is also one which simply says, ask me. This is all very thoughtful and considerate for the rapists and paedophiles, and I'm sure that many of them only committed the offences for which they are banged up because society would not accept them as non-binary or women trapped in men's bodies or whatever. Now, I don't want to sound like an old person, the kind who writes to the papers moaning about modern society, but I do feel that we should bear in mind that all those men have actually chosen to be in Parkhurst or Albany. They're not being held against their will. They embarked upon courses of action which any reasonable person could have seen would end up in prison. At some point they have decided to interfere with children or rape women and the natural consequence is that they are destined to spend years being deprived of their freedom. If you don't want to end up in this situation, simply don't do such dreadful things. Once they have been caught and locked up though, I'm not at all sure how much time we should spend worrying about their gender identity. Trust me, rapists are all men. I don't much care if they prefer to be referred to as she or they. These people are still dangerous men for all that. I might mention here that it's something of a tradition in prison for people to get religion and suck up to the padre as a way of showing they have changed and should be released. There's a tendency at the moment in the same way, especially among sexual offenders, to claim that they are tortured creatures who only raped women and molested children because society forced them into the straitjacket of gender conformity. Many men in prison are exceedingly cunning about exploiting any little thing which might get them an early release or tr a transfer to a softer prison, perhaps even, as sometimes happens, to a women's prison. I can certainly think of many better things that Parkhurst Prison could be doing with its money than encouraging this racket by letting prisoners wear badges asking people to refer to them as she.